Today, however, new parts, like new radios, are difficult to get. Therefore, when your radio needs attention, it's important that you call not just a handyman, but a highly skilled radio technician. Good day, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. This is part three of our Halicrafters S40 restoration project. Um, if you're enjoying this series of videos, take a moment, give us a hand, support our channel, support the community, and subscribe. little button right in the corner of the uh, screen here that makes it real easy for you to subscribe. So in this uh, uh, series, part three, we've, uh, we're going to do the uh, heavy lifting of replacing all of the wax paper capacitors. So in quick review, part one, we focused on uh, doing an initial assessment. In part two, we focused on my power supply stages. And part three is now time to do the wax paper capacitors. So let's uh, flip this thing over and uh, get an idea of the scope of work that we have to do. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> if you haven't had a chance to watch my video on uh, identifying uh, capacitors for tube radios, um, now would be a good time to take a peek at it. Uh, we can see a few types of capacitors here that we uh, covered in that video and I'll just quickly recap. Um, these round ones are the wax paper caps that uh, everybody sings about uh, going bad and they do, they leak, they do short, they do all kinds of horrible things um, and they can't be left, they all have to be changed. This here is called a domino. It's a silver mica cap. They seldom go wrong. Once in a while they do, but not very often. So we're not going to bother those. We don't change these unless they prove themselves needed to be changed. So to the new folks who are just starting this uh, hobby, I strongly recommend that you take one capacitor out at a time. You snip it off, read the value, find your replacement, and install it before moving on to the next. I also recommend that you cut it off at the shoulders and you leave the leads attached until you get the new cap installed. That way you can remember where the capacitor started and stopped or where the connections were. Some people will cut the leads right off and then all of a sudden they'll forget where it was. So if you leave the leads on, it's kind of sort of a memory point for us old folks, but anyways. Um, this is just uh, some heavy lifting and grunt work to do, and uh, uh, there's nothing magic, there's nothing special, there's nothing hard about doing this whatsoever. There's even nothing really technical. If you're not too bad at soldering, you can get through this. Just cut the cap out, read the value, replace it with what um, is, uh, is written on the cap. Um, if they all look original like these do, then you can pretty much trust them, but if you get ones that are different colors, you might want to refer to the schematic to make sure that the uh, previous technician has installed the correct one. And remember, I mentioned a long time ago, don't trust other technicians. So um, it's pretty straightforward. It's fussy work. Um, but the, uh, the fruits of your labor will be very clearly enjoyed when uh, this radio gets to fire up. And these are the two power resistors I talked about in an earlier episode. They came today, so I have replacements for these. They will go in in this, uh, in this segment. So with that, I'm going to begin changing them, but I uh, won't do it on camera. and won't bore the pants off you, but we'll cut in and cut out for some updates as we go. Okay, so let's look at uh, a little bit of progress. I've worked my way down and changed all of these caps that were in this section here. So uh, we'll do this one next section. Um, but I thought this would be a good point to talk about some things that we see here that maybe you might not be familiar with. Um, we have a replacement cap, and if you can see, I've used this stuff they call spaghetti. to Protect the leads to make sure shorts don't happen. When the leads get a little long, and spaghetti is nothing more than an empty tube. And you can buy it as all colors under the rainbow. But I buy this stuff as Teflon. And it doesn't melt. And I like that. So you can get it right close to a solder joint. And it doesn't phase it at all. You cut it to length. You slip it on. You go ahead and solder your joint. I think it's great stuff. So 
is called spaghetti. So I made a discovery um, as I was working away here. Um, it's not uncommon for me to be poking away with my ohms meter as I go looking at things. Um, and I found that the second IF transformer, one of the windings was open. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't film it. I forgot uh, that I had you folks all in tow. And I went ahead and I took the transformer all apart and found out what was going on. Um, one of the small wires broke off a terminal. Now, when I say small wires, I mean fine like a human hair. I believe it's what they call Litz wire, which is super fine copper covered with silk. Um, so I managed to solder it back on. But I've got a photo I'm going to put up here in just a second of another IF transformer from another um, S40. So you can see the type of connection I'm talking about, and you can see the uh, how fine this wire is. And when I took the transformer apart, and I'll, I'll throw up a picture of this too, um, it became increasingly obvious once I took the cover off the transformer that the previous owner had been bashing on it. You can see there's dents in the top of the transformer. So I assume this was maybe a cold solder joint right from the factory that finally let go, uh, something along that line, who knows, but the wire came right off. I found it. It now seems to test okay, but the final proof will be when we finally turn the radio on. So I just happened to discover that by accident. So I'm, uh, I'm going to continue on now, and I'm going to deal with um, all of these uh, capacitors. My uh, resistors came in. For uh, the power resistor, so we'll replace those as well, and we'll carry on, and uh, we'll be back in a minute or two, or less. So here we are with the uh, capacitor replacement completely done, along with our new power resistors. It really is truly amazing how much smaller the modern stuff is compared to the old stuff. So this completes step three of restoring an old tube radio so at this point i'm going to wrap this video up if you've got questions by all means leave them below i'll uh, be delighted to answer them and uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe it would really help our channel and uh, i guess we'll see you in the next one